This is the BodyWise Podcast. Thank you for joining Laura and Christina for another intimate exploration of collective wisdom. Hello, and welcome back to BodyWise Podcast. I'm excited about this episode because I have an in-person guest. Hi. Hi. This is Justin, everybody. If you don't know who Justin is, he's my husband. Hi. Justin Kerr. Welcome. I'll say more than that, but... Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. In my own bedroom. <laughs> yeah, we're upstairs because my office is in essentially the living room kitchen area and Jack is done with school and downstairs and loud. Um, yes. So for this episode, I thought it'd be fun to have Justin on here for a few reasons. One, he's never been on here. Two, we were talking about like, you know, it's always what can be relevant to you guys, the listener. Um, and we were thinking that... Um, talking about our experience through parenting, co-parenting, through having a child home like 24 seven all of a sudden um, through COVID. And we want to talk about Justin's like isolation period last year before he deployed, because I think a lot of people are, again, just very fatigued during this new COVID reality. We both, we were just talking about that a lot. Like we miss friends, we miss having a social life. Um, <clears throat> Even like coworkers, like Justin's work uh, situation has been really different. So we're going to dive into all of that. Um, before we do, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, our sponsors at Kettle and Fire. I've been using the bone broth. Justin's a big fan. The little, um, you know, the, one, the little the carton ones that you like yeah. so much. Um, they're really great. I love the bone broth, specifically the beef bone broth one, because it is nightshade free. Um, but it is made from grass fed bones. It is organic. It's whole 30 approved. And I love that the packaging is totally recyclable. Um, and you can save 25%, which I feel like is a really good discount with the code castaway. And I'll add the link in the show notes. So make sure to pick up some kettle on fire, either from their website with the discount. And honestly, I think right now they're available like at nationwide, like all stores, which is cool, but you can get them shipped directly to your door. So very cool. I'm a fan. So let's start with questions. I'm going to give start interviewing you mm -hmm. in that kind of format because he's feeling weird about it yeah she asked me to do this and i was like i don't know what to say but i was like well she's the host so she's driving and i'm the guest so and then he's like are we going to talk shit about lada since she's not here <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say that yeah. i said well, do we have to give her a shout out you didn't hi lada that. you didn't say that <laughs> she didn't quote me right <laughs> anyway um so babe yeah how tell us i want to talk a little bit about, about your to your time period by yourself last how long were you by yourself here in the house uh 65 days what were you doing in the 65 days mm. so i thought i was leaving on deployment you guys probably know this story I don't. Assuming, no. so i thought i was leaving on deployment um to iraq christine and jack and the dog bruce were going to tampa um I got turned around the same day they dropped me off. They went to Tampa the next day because I didn't know when I was going to be going, but that's when COVID really started kicking off. So I just, you know, had them stay in Tampa and then I stayed home because I thought any week or any day now I'd be, I'd be flying out. And that turned into 65 days, which is crazy. Um, I couldn't go see them because then you have to quarantine and Florida was on the naughty list. Um, and so it was okay the first week because I was optimistic that I was leaving in a week. Then I had another week and I was like, oh, I can just hang out. You know, it's always cool. And like, you get a little of alone time, but um, things just started getting bad being alone all the time um, because everyone else was in their house. So there was no socializing. Um, and you're just pretty much left like in your own mind the whole time. You know, the best part of the day was like talking to her or Jack on the phone, um, but way too much time to think. And uh, I was not a huge fan. So also was teleworking um, for work, which in those early times of COVID meant we were pretty much doing nothing because the line of work that I'm in is, you know, required to be like in a secure facility. So we couldn't do any of that stuff. Um, so really, I wasn't doing much. Um, yeah. And it was really hard. It, it became very taxing on his mental health. Like when we came home, we have this mirror in our dining room and there was, <laughs> it's sad. It's, it's not always still there, but it's like, I it. okay. They're literally like tick yeah. marks, like, like a prisoner, like in jail. <laughs> so like, to be fair, I did that after like 20 days or something. Cause I was just curious because I, I really stopped losing, um, 
my sense of time. Like each day was like very, it was like, was, has it been a week? And then it was like, no, it's been two months. Like what? And then a week would go by and it felt like, you know, like a day or something. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was it hard. Was, it was not cool. And one of the things, I mean, it's funny in retrospect in the moment, one is when we came home, I saw a little tick marks. I was like, oh my gosh. Anyways, but um, one of the things that it was hard from the outside, um, me being in Florida and then speaking to Justin and being like, hearing how he was struggling and me being like, well, do something like go for a yeah. bike ride. And I'd be trying to do this like all proactive stuff. And then I would get frustrated because I was like, well, he's not helping himself, but isn't that like, that's not how mental health really works. Right. right. And so he's over here kind of like, cause you're like telling yourself to do all that stuff. Like I would go on, I would go for walks um, just to get outside. I really hated when the sun went down because I, I knew there was sort of nothing left um, of the day that I had just wasted. What? Hmm. Oh, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought, but um, he it, did. He did pick up the little like swamp jar. Ecosystem. Oh, did you, t- did you tell someone about that? <laughs> I oh, I went. Did. I went to a lake um, with a with a jar, and because I, I saw it on the internet, and I was, I, I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So I scooped up some lake lake water with some dirt, and um, it's still here. It's been almost a year, still thriving. It's a little ecosystem. It's kind of mm-hmm. cool. Never been opened. It's nope. been dropped once. <laughs> took two years off its life no it's ecosystem. Anyway. but anyway we want to start with that because preface with that because i know that a lot of people you know have in, over the last year have had a lot of different experiences with, with covid um obviously obvious, i was with jack the struggles of being a mom working mom with a child at home all the time that's difficult but i know a lot of the listeners were people who were by themselves and and mm-hmm. people who continue to be essentially teleworking from home you know, by your, them by yourselves, and that that is very. There's like long term effects on on mental health because of that. I mean, Justin really struggled, and then you know how crazy we, we kind of like laughed about it later. But how he he was excited to deploy to Iraq <laughs> to get right. out of being alone. Yeah, and it was zero to a hundred in like a day. Um, I was excited to leave. Um, I was nervous that the skills I learned through training um, were starting to dwindle because I wasn't using them, and I wasn't really thinking about anything. Um, but it ended up being fine because when I got there, I got to go into quarantine, which was like a baby step to starting my actual job. And, um, I had a, I had a great time over there. Um, and so of course, when I came home, they were, they greeted me at the airport. So, right. so it was good. And Bruce was in the hospital and it was just great. Right. Good times. Yeah. So it definitely, and then even now, right. So we're a year in, oh my God, it's going to be a year. We're like at the beginning of March guys, we are hitting mm-hmm. a year mark on covid hitting the states and just the world and on lockdowns and quarantines and working teleworking and kids distance learning and you know we i don't think this time last year we would have ever thought that life would be this way you know yeah teleworking is okay for a short term um i'm sure many of you have experienced it um i also telework when i go to regular work though um to because the people I work for work in a different city um so it's very frustrating to go to work and then still not really have any workmates or talk to anybody um I have friends uh we have friends that in in this area that have been teleworking the whole time yeah and um so I can't imagine what everyone's going through it's it's pretty difficult yeah that human interaction uh we're missing out on a lot is takes a toll on you for sure Mm -hmm. yeah we were just again talking about that because even with the new like normal. So we have Jack home all the time and we wanted to dive into kind of our how dynamics and have changed with co-parenting um, because, you know, Jack used to be at school all day. So I would put Jack on a bus at 8.45. What is it? 8.40, it was like 9 a.m. Something, like that. something like that, right? Yeah, 8.30. And then he'd come home at 4.30 in the afternoon and we were like, great, we haven't seen you all day. He wants to play with his friends. We all like enjoy that time outside with our neighbors right. as the kids played and then come in as a family and do stuff. But now we have Jack who's home all the time. And although he's on his school, you know, he's like all these breaks, he has a super long lunch. Right. Um, it's really different for me because I don't get to like go to the gym while he's at school and run errands. And um, it's essentially when he gets home and then I'm like, well, I got to go do stuff. Or I'm just like, want to pull my hair out because I've been having to manage work and my child at the same time, which is frustrating. Um, but Justin's really good. And again, like he teleworked for a while, but now he is, and he's on a weird schedule too, but anyway, that's neither here nor there, I guess. But, um, and you know, Justin is, I think such a good, like 
pa like partner parenter with me. You know, I think that um, when Jack was a baby, maybe the dynamic was a little bit different because Jack was so dependent on me. Um, but as he's gotten older, and I think I think a big shift was when we were in Hawaii, and Jack kind of turned that point, like three, four years old, and um, and when I was writing like my first book, and I, I remember just like when I started writing Made Whole, I was just checked out all the time, like a lot. And Jack would, you know, like they did their thing. Um, but Justin's really proactive in terms of just like, you know, we have this thing, like De Justin's not the nanny. He's not like, he's not watching our child. Like he's, he's a parent. And I know not everyone has a dynamic um, and it, whatever works for people, but we just want to share a little bit about that because um, sometimes when I just talk to other people, um, especially I think more people in our generation or like our age or a little older have just you know, even living on base, like I remember last year, it was like kind of our, yeah, a couple of years ago, sorry, last year, three, last time we were in Hawaii, I felt like the way things were like, it was like all the moms at the park and then Justin. <laughs> and then with Oh Jack. yeah, that's right. She'd come out seldomly, but she was busy because she's right. been working from home. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Like, I mean, what I know, um, like what are this the when you come home from work I mean maybe not now in your weird schedule but on a normal normal circumstances um, and you know this is the new normal okay. Christina. Uh, I know I'm so sick of saying that new normal but like you know I'm obviously I'm at my desk or I'm still enthralled with work and Jack is you know I usually give you the download like he's done with school or he's fed or he's not or he's whatever but mm -hmm. um, and then you just kind of like take the baton and, and run with it so like what's your thought process there um, I try to keep Jack off her back, um, because she works from home and she always has worked from home. Uh, well, for the last several years. Um, so Jack is a different person now, and he's also going through this teleworking thing with virtual school. So you're not, you're not really dealing with the same child, um, who gets to run around and, and be with his friends all day. He's forced to sit at this desk here. And, um, you know, he's seven. So that's not, you're already dealing with a different type of person that wants to get out. So you just try to encourage them the best they can to like get done what they need to get done without sounding overbearing because it's like, I'm rooting for him. Um, and then, yeah, at the same time, we can both go out and do what we need to do. Yeah. And have fun. And so you can accomplish what you need to do. Um, then everybody's happy. Maybe pick up around the house. If I could just try to make her life easier, really. No, oh, thank you. Because I go to work, I have a job. It's not terribly difficult. Like it's not strenuous. It's not very stressful. Um, I am fortunate enough to where I get to leave the house to go do my job. So I don't have anyone bothering me. I mean, I just told you I don't even get to talk to anyone at work, but that tells you right there, no one's bothering me. So when I get home, you know, I'm like, I'm pretty fresh. Um, and I haven't had to deal with like anybody. So it's it's pretty easy at that point of the day for me to take over. Yeah, which is great. So Jack in the afternoons after school, especially even though it's gross today, but most days the neighborhood kids will play outside. There's a good little group and they, you know, he's up mass walkie talkie, all his like winter stuff. But Justin's really good about like checking in with him and making sure calling him in when it's time around 530 when the sun goes down. Um, but even let's say with school, you know, so with school stuff, like when I was in like, you know, it's hard when you have a like a seven-year-old, right? Because you mentioned like his behavior has changed so much, right? Because there's normally they're in school and like, yeah, even just playing on the bus and recess and all that stuff. And like, he would come home just like kind of be like tired. Right. And now it's the opposite end of the day. He's kind of like, blah, yeah. because he's been sitting. I mean, in this room, he just like in the computer where we're filming this. Facing is, in the same direction. <laughs> like, this is yeah, he's, he's been sitting. facing it all day. I know your kids have been going through this too. Um, but you know, they mature so quickly. Um, well, they have a wide range of things they're maturing through in one year, one school year. And then also forced to sit here all day. And then um, you expect them to do everything they're supposed to be doing every day. I told you yesterday, whatever. But I mean, it's a lot. We do expect a lot out of him. Um, I've tried to tone that down a little bit. But, um, you know, also sort of celebrate that he actually did sit here all day and do what he was supposed to do. He's not being challenged um, as much as he should be. Um, if he was in uh, what, live school, is that what you call it now? <laughs> live school. Um, so there's a lot of things that are frustrating to him. So if you could just get him outside, get him out the door somehow, get him to focus like one last push, you know? Right. So, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Justin's good about like, you know, kind of gear, like keeping Jack in like 
without like I don't know I guess he's less emotional about it I, I don't know I get like frustrated with Jack when it comes to school stuff I think more because I was doing it longer and he's fresher with it because I started last year um but it has evolved a lot and even the way that like Jack's behavior has changed so much in the last year oh look he he went out to play oh well he knew not to interrupt us <laughs> I just saw him in the window. I heard him get the walkie-talkie. Mm. Anyway, um, but you know, one of the things that we started seeing with Jack's behavior that was kind of difficult was one, um, kind of more of a sneaking behavior. Like it's weird. I mean, like I remember, like as a seven-year-old, like I don't know when I was in second grade, I wasn't like slacking school. But I mean, he's seven on a computer. You were also at school. I was at school, right? So like he got caught, um, like uh, like where I get an email from his teacher. I'm downstairs working. He's upstairs in school, and I get an email from his teacher saying she's calling on him and he's not answering. So he was muting school, and then like going to other websites. I uh, you know, and it's like that's the kind of thing where you're like but that was one hour of one day of how many days has he been doing this? No, I mean, I mean it happened more than once, but or at least he got caught right. once. But yeah, it happened one. It happened like twice. You but you can have your mother on here and remind us what you were doing when you were seven in school. I don't know. You probably don't remember all the best. No, stuff. I was a good kid when I was in second grade. We all? I don't know. Anyway, but you know, then you write the expectation, right? Because I remember just getting like so upset at him. But then at the same time, I'm like, I would probably do that too. Like how many of us, if we were on a seven hour Zoom call, would be on Facebook at the same time? First of all, what are you doing when you're at work all day? You working all day? Everybody put your hand down. <laughs> so, right so that's been definitely like where turn you, your camera on we have meetings when we have meetings uh <laughs> at work like no one has their camera on except for the one guy you know because he just got like a new living room set he wants to show it off i know i know it's hard but we have to you know and the expectations we're like, like the same we're the same people right they're just and then it's crazy that we have these high expectations of these little people but um one behavior change i mean granted jackson only child and um even though he's been like extremely socialized since he was little because since he was like itty bitty play dates group like playing with neighbors, all the mom groups. Um, he still has a, several, several only child, um, like uh, what are the character traits, <laughs> habits, um, which can be a little bit annoying. But um, one of the things which I think was just amplified, I, I maybe just, I don't know, over the last year, and I don't know if it's more COVID and not being in school with other kids, but something that started really coming up was like, not great at like losing or like a sore loser. Oh, yeah thing which he's was is a terrible sore loser yeah. if that's a, a thing right and so oh can i tell how i think that got started yeah i think i started that oh unfortunately yeah. so in hawaii we lived uh we had a two-story house on base and um there was this silly blue cup that came from a bowling alley in miami <laughs> that we've had forever right. and that's what we used in the bathtub i would give him baths right and that's what i would use to hose them down whatever you want to call it so it always is in the bathroom. And then it was, I had to encourage him to go up there after dinner to take a bath. So I just made this knock the cup in game. Like when, since he was like three. I said, hey Jack, I'm gonna knock the cup in. So I pretend to hurry up the stairs and then he would scurry past me to go knock the cup in before me. And he would laugh and we'd be, and I'd act like I was like defeated, you know? And we did that like every day pretty much. For years. And then every now and then, I knew it was a bad idea <laughs> after a while. I Because when I knocked the cup in myself, oh my God. He's freaking he out. Lost his mind. Yeah. And I would do it every now and then we get an argument. And it was just like, I was like, this is not, this is silly. Anyways, it developed into an actual problem <laughs> of him being able to lose at anything. So um, we started to fix that by playing games. We don't play that anymore. Actually, we do every now and then just for fun because that same blue cup is in there, but he's seven. But um, it's just more of a joke. We kind of make fun of each other now for doing it in the past. Anyways, we started playing games with them. Yeah, after dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so chess, chess, surprisingly, I think, is that he has to think so much about it. He has a much like easier time losing chess because he's almost like, oh, it's I like an accepted defeat. I, yeah, right. he's, it's kind of crazy. Actually. I know. I was but, surprised. But then like Uno, he loses his mind, which like is weird. Crying. crying, which is weird because I feel like Uno's so much more chance. And then I usually school both of them in Uno, which is random. Well, games that are chance, he just he just never understood that, like shoots and ladders, and right. those games are terrible. Right, but. and like Candyland. Um, but anyway, we both read online. We did a little thing, like, just again, like most things in life, like adulting. We realize is googling things, mm -hmm. but we just were reading. We're like, how do you help your kid 
not yeah. be such a sore loser. And so one of the things we read was you just play a lot of games with them. And so not only for us to with each other, nice game, oh look, good mover, you know, like right. like not just so they can and be gracious mimic when, when you our move. right sportsmanship, but yeah. um gracious losing as well. Um and that's I think helped a little bit. I mean we still have to keep it up and he's really receptive. Um and Justin was one of eight siblings. I'm one of three and you know for him to be an only child it those kind of only child isms of his really stand out to us as some as people who had a lot of siblings so we're we're very cognizant of that um and then i think of course through this covid thing it's been pretty amplified some of those some of those things that were like Ew, you yeah. know don't let your kids win just play like you're playing an adult every time that's what i learned right right yeah don't let the kids win and, and that's you know except for the cup game no, oh my gosh, the cup game. So when I was, when Jack was very little, I would give him a bath, you know? And then I remember that was actually the way that that changed. Oh yeah, you hated doing that. I know because it was like end of the day and I'm so done parenting. I'd like, be doing the dishes because I'm real good at that. Right. And that actually is, we like, it was one of those things where I remember I was just so over it. Um, Cause I always cooked and then Justin always did the dishes and then I would give Jack a bath. But yeah, you know how it is. You could, I don't know. This was definitely when we were in Hawaii. So Jack was like two and a half, three. And I was like, I, I rather do the dishes than give him a bath at this point. And then we switched roles on that. And then for the long time, then the cup game and way to go. Man. <laughs> yeah. But I knew in my mind that he's going to bathe himself eventually. And I don't have to do that or the dishes. You do the dishes now. I know. I, I didn't think that I would actually give in and do them, but I do help out with the dishes. He does. Come on now. He does. He does. He does. He usually does them. Like he'll offer to do them after I cook. It's partly because he's grateful, partly because he likes how he does them better. You would do. Okay. So what else do you want to talk about? So um, how many people are listening to this? This isn't live. It's I know, but recording. when, when you, you pretend it's live when you're talking, how many people you think listen to this? I don't know. I don't want to talk like, oh, I was just curious to see what my audience is. Oh, it depends. Hmm. Maybe make it interesting more people listen. All right. Okay. We'll Justin try. doesn't know how podcast works. <laughs> I listen to him only. So. Okay. Do you listen to podcasts where they have these conversations? Yeah. The, like this? Yeah. Oh, okay. What kind of podcast yeah. do you listen to? Ones with guests on them. Good oh. ones. <laughs> okay. Very, Are very you a good guest? Like, very much like this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's just been hard parenting COVID um, this year. Like, you know, we went on our first kind of date in a long time, which is kind of a weird non-date date. But, um, you know, it's just lacking time with your partner one of the things that justin and i kind of find ourselves like it's this weird thing where we're home all the time we don't have a lot to do but then we don't necessarily always spend time together which is weird right because i think that when we tend to kind of get recluse when you're feeling like more bound you know like sometimes i my coping mechanism which i'm not saying it's a good one and justin calls me out on it is i just work all the time like i'm like well but nothing else to do so i'm just gonna work more like fix stuff on the blog, do more recipes, type it, I'll be on the computer, it'll be nine o'clock at night. And he's like, get off the computer. Um, and then this one has his little, like, I call it the, we call it the shop. It's like a little, like his little like man cave in the, in the garage. It's like an insulated room adjacent yes. to the garage where his bicycles and his tools. And he hangs out in there. Listen to music, eat shit on my phone. Right. You know? And so that's where he escapes to. Where sometimes I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, because then Jack's downstairs so I can hear what he's doing and I'm just kind of keeping tabs. Anyway. Yeah, everyone goes in their own little hole. Right. Which I don't know. It's like, do it's like, do we need more isolation when we're already isolated? But we tend to sometimes fall into that routine where like, I'm like, a week has gone by and we're like, man, we have not hung out at all. We just kind of like dinner. Once Jack goes to bed, everyone kind of like to their corners. Because at the same time, while we're isolated from the world around us, we're also like in the same space a lot, but not necessarily doing things together. Like we eat all of our meals together. Um, but we, you just get like fatigued kind of like I, you know, before it got really cold, we would every weekend for like during the fall, we were very good about like hikes, you know, doing several weeks in a row. We were like, we went to different, to Great Falls. Mm -hmm. We went to the other one. We did, we did yeah. the, the bike path. The weather does really change everything because you don't get to spend as much time outside. That's a big, that's like a whole different category of what we're talking about, you know, because if it was 65 right, and sunny, and sunny right now, we'd be outside this would be a different conversation right it's like four o'clock and we wouldn't be recording a podcast we'd be like now nah, right. we're gonna be outside but sit outside in your chair right <laughs> not inside in the chair no honestly right so in, we're in northern virginia now i know people get confused of where i live because where we live because 
we lived here. We were trying to get to Florida. That didn't work out, but I spent time there while he was deployed. And then now we're still in Virginia moving to Hawaii this summer. So in Hawaii, it'll be totally different where right. it's really nice out all the time. So although we can't, we wouldn't, we won't be able to necessarily go places, just being outside of your house, like your front yard mm. is a nice experience because there's blue skies and there's a breeze. And I know some of you listening are in warmer climates. Um, and if so, I'm sure you're taking advantage of your, you know, balcony yard porch, whatever you got. Um, and those of you who are in cold, well, right now, isn't there, there's a freaking blizzard all over the world right now. And like Texas is frozen. So I don't know what's going on. And then the global warming on top of everything. So mm-hmm. what's the world what can coming? you do? What's the world coming yeah. to? It's hard. It's just, I think everyone's got that. Like, are we done yet with mm-hmm. life being crazy? You know, it's crazy. Was it this hard before it got cold? And we were limited to what we could do outside. It was not as hard. It's also hard to judge, right? Because then you've been, we've been going through it longer now. So, we're so it's like, it. no, <laughs> I think we're just more worn out. Oh, yeah. Mentally. Fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. But when it was warmer out, like our neighborhood is really nice because it's like a little cul de sac kind of townhouse, cookie cutter kind of vibe out here. But when it was in fall, particularly before it got gross out, the neighbors were really good at like just kind of like gathering on corners and part mm-hmm. and driveways like no one would go into anyone's house because they're all covid friendly but there was a lot more of like outdoor conversations of people so we would right. speak to our neighbors more where now like a week or two will go by and we actually don't speak to other humans that aren't us <laughs> like in person um that can be hard i miss peopling like do you feel like you talk longer to like grocery store clerks you know me. I've always talked to people in public that I don't know. But um, no, I don't. Actually, maybe less, honestly. Really? Yeah, I use the self-checkout only now. It's like, oh, I don't want to talk that's easy to go to Safeway. Um, true that. But I do. I feel like at Wegmans and Safeway. I do miss hanging outside when it's nice uh, to talk to people. Yeah. Yeah, that does make a big difference. It does. Kids are excited. They're all playing with each other. And you just talk to the parents, whatever. You know, we ran out of projects to do we don't own the house that we're sitting in right now. So I'm not going to be doing anything crazy like my neighbor across the way over there. <laughs> He's like basically renovated the whole the inside whole of his house. house and it's, he did an amazing like job. A, but, they've done a, a bathroom, you know, the basement. That's a little fireplace. more constructive than maybe the, the way I've dealt with things. Um, right. But you know, that's why you have friends like that. Right. Yeah. And some people, I think that's another good conversation. Like some people are going to be those people that like renovate their house during COVID or like start a business and then other people are gonna like sleep a lot more and Mm -hmm. maybe become alcoholics and like i think that there's honestly i don't know there's no right or wrong way like productivity is great but there is this i feel like we do less but i'm more tired yeah i I mean you should definitely watch yourself and how you're coping with this whole covid thing or the kid being at home or you know um and take cues from others that you think are doing a good job, you know, like my neighbor. Um, that's important, I think. Yeah. 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 I think, I mean, earlier on, it was a little harder. Um, I talked about this on the podcast, kind of like loosening up certain things. Like I just, it was hard because again, there was like, I, gyms were closed. Like so much of my routines that like I built over time that kept me healthy were just like, seemed like too much. So I kind of stopped a lot of those things. Um, and then kind of, in the last few months was like, no, I need those things in my life. So I've been more, mm. okay. Like, what do you mean? They seemed like too much. It was just hard. Well, they were closed. Some of that stuff, right? Right. Like the gym, like our normal gym was closed. I mean, I'm still going to another gym, but it's not the gym that I like. And, um, but like the food stuff was even hard. Like, you know, I was in Florida with like living with my mom and it was just harder to oh, right. manage like, you know, dietary stuff. And so I was being a little more fast and loose with like dairy and, you know, grains or foods that just don't, jive super well with me and I was like I'm okay it's okay until I was like I'm not okay <laughs> and then um you know definitely like I feel like November November we were drinking or I was more than I normally do and you know again like wine is fun but I just don't feel great when I drink often and so um you know a coping mechanism that overall makes me feel worse isn't a great coping mechanism so um go backwards every time a little bit right right so then i kind of was like i need to get back to and i just i think when we found when we found out like maybe that's kind of the straw that broke the camel's back but instead of like freaking out it was like the opposite like finding out we were moving to hawaii and not tampa Mm. kind of got me thinking of how good 
we both felt as a family, we were thriving in Hawaii. I've been like thinking of the vitamin D and the sunshine and the ocean and we're going to be there soon. And I thought, I don't want to get there feeling crappy. Like I got to Hawaii feeling really crappy last time. Like I was really unhealthy. I think we, we all kind of were as a family, just like, like in shambles. And so I'm like, I want to get to Hawaii feeling good. So that really got me like being consistent with the gym again, like going back to AIP to do a reset, to like heal my gut from like the stress of 2020 that like ruined it. Um, and now, and then, and then I feel like even just launching the better together program, like I switched from maybe being a little like destructive in my coping mechanisms, which are like some, you know, older patterns in my life to then being constructive. But mm-hmm. again, there's no, you know, what do you think? How do you feel your coping mechanisms have been? Um, I did well on deployment. I didn't have to have any coping me- mechanisms there because I was so busy and engaged. Um, when I came back, it was still somewhat exciting, right? I had a lot of time off. Um, we were still teleworking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then we started going back to work. So that was all fine because they were here. Uh, uh, started going back to work and then um, on a crazy schedule. So I don't really know. Um, sleep is a good coping mechanism or not. I don't know. Cause on the weekend I could sleep forever because I work from four to 1230 and then so like I have to sleep in two shifts, two four hour shifts a day, basically, which never happens. It's um, so on the weekends, I'm excited to be able to stay up a little late, but then I don't want to get up in the morning. Right. And then it's yeah, it's just kind of ruins the weekend. Some not it doesn't ruin the weekend, but sometimes you get a late start. So yeah. I just another thing. I do find myself because there's something to do or nowhere to go, and it's also blew me out that on the weekends we'll i mean when we say sleep in like we say 9 a.m it's like 9 a.m which come on remember when before we had we were parents and we would sleep till like 3 p.m also because yeah, we were up yeah. i know but now it's crazy how like adulting is like slept until 9 p.m 9, 9 30 <laughs> yeah but your son's been up for three hours already at that point <laughs> i know and we wake up at nine and jack's like and i he's watched saying, the movie he's, made saying he's not hungry i'm like wait what'd you do he ate me pancakes mm-hmm. <laughs> that's usually what he did um yeah, it's definitely been, it's been, it's been, a, it's been, a, it's still strange. I mean, we're still in it and there's still days that like, I don't want to do anything or I do stay up to like, that's a definitely, I mean, that's a pattern that I see a lot of people actually, I was just on another podcast when we were talking about, and it was with someone who has her own, you know, Heather's coaching. She was, she actually did the last episode and then I was on hers, but she's saying that something that she's seen come up a lot with her, with her uh, clients is, um, you know, like stress eating or snacking or just like, again, like, like those kind of habits. And a lot of people are like, well, now I feel crappy or now I've gained weight or now I feel this. And then you're just like harder on yourself. But like, does piling on the guilt, like what's, that's not good either because we're still in this, man. <laughs> like we're still in it. Yeah. Is it almost over? I don't know. So. I think that's maybe the part that's exhausting where you're like, right. You gotta pace yourself. It's a marathon. Yeah. You don't know what you're pacing yourself for though. Go through phases, you know, of optimism and pessimism and um, staying up too late or getting up too late or you know comes and goes in phases yeah yeah there's definitely that like and i think that's again something else that we're all just realizing um or just these new patterns emerge and how human they are you know um because people of course like to be like you know best foot forward and talk about the good stuff all the time but i think that that's very human like i'm gonna be on a roll for a few weeks and then i'm gonna be like crash just for a little bit yeah, I mean, we've been fortunate yeah. um, that I we've both been employed this whole time, and so I can't imagine like some of my friends going through this same stuff we've just been talking about, but then also like not having a job or very limited hours and limited income. I can't imagine what that would do to someone. Yeah. So, yeah, or losing. So your you, home. you know, I don't like that saying like someone always has it worse than you or whatever, but that's true <laughs> in this case for sure. You know, so try to look at the bright side of the situation. You know, it's not that terrible. You know, I'm not in physical pain. I have a roof over my head. We have food in the fridge. And honestly, we've been very lucky, our family, that, you know, we haven't um, we haven't lost anyone like right. directly that we know to COVID. I mean, I've had friends that lost have lost people. And then, um, my stepdad's parents got it in Argentina, but they're fine, you know. But it's crazy how it just started like, you know, there's a few people in the family that have had it, but we're okay. Um but yeah, so many people have lost people. So many people have lost their jobs. I mean, now look at Texas, people are losing their homes like and everything they owned. Um, and I think there's a collective 
grief, a collective, mm -hmm. like human just struggle. And because we're also in tune to everything that's happening. I mean, from, from the ongoing like social justice issues in the world to the ongoing, I mean, then of course we went through an election and a really crazy one at that, right? The insurrection, like that was just like a month ago. <laughs> like that wasn't that long ago that we watched people attack the Capitol building on the news. Like it's just, and the, like, it's, it's nonstop, you know, thinking of, like of. I mean, I think, honestly, I think that's just a sign of, you know, what everyone's been through. Um, I think a lot of the people that are going crazy, like that we saw on January 6th are just um, a product of this whole COVID thing. I'm not blaming that or like excusing them. I'm just saying everyone's getting a little crazy, mm. you know, so. Maybe, yeah, there's definitely been a lot more of that quite like just like what? And I guess again, people have very weird coping mechanisms, but um, as we re reflect on this year and the year anniversary of the Rona, um, I don't know. I, I think there's a sense of maybe because spring is around the corner, um, cautious optimism, um, maybe mixed with a lot of fatigue. I don't know. You yeah, know? I think we're, everything's looking up. So yeah, I mean, because at least even if you're in a cold place like we are, it's not going to be cold for much longer, guys. The winter's like, what, a month month left? Sun just came out, too, if you can tell with the lighting, and it already makes me feel better. Like, look at that. It's like a sign. Ah. Mm -hmm the clouds parted. Um, yeah, but I hope that wherever you are, you know, and it's those of you who are at home and I know that Corona has been really stressful on marriages, on partnerships, on relationships in general. I know that, I mean, we've definitely had our ups and downs over the last year. We did spend some of it apart, which I think in a weird way, like we got to like miss each other, um, before we were thrown to being home together all the time. Um, but you know, I don't know, like, we don't have answers, obviously, we're just kind of here sharing that we're going through it too. Um, so you feel less alone in going through it. Yeah, no. How was I? Good. You want anything else to share? I don't. Anyway, but I do appreciate Justin's, um, like, just his parenting skills. And um, it's really nice to know that, um, you know, like, our child is taken care of, like, Jack is fine. Like, I don't have to be wearing my mom hat all the time. I mean, you kind of always are when you're a mom, but it's, I can just, you know. Some, sometimes you have to mom both of us. That's true. That's sometimes me and Jack will be siblings. That is also true. And mm -mm, I'm mm -mm, not fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop antagonizing him. Anyway, but um, yeah. And it's, again, like, it's been a rough year for everyone. For moms, for, for the kids. Um, but we're having, I haven't, we haven't stabbed each other yet. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that. And I do appreciate that he's you're very helpful and hands on with him. Well, it's my pleasure. Yeah. This is all doable, apparently. Apparently, right? Isn't that something that we've learned? But like, as, as shittier and as hard as it keeps getting, it's like somehow we're still here. Yeah. Right? We're still just doing it. Which is weird. Anyways, I'm sure in the years to come, they'll be like, um, unfolding and explorations of like the long-term like changes to human behavior and dynamics because of this crazy social experiment that we've all been a part of in the last mm -hmm. few years and the last year and, and a half and um and how it'll affect the future generations and um I don't know I just keep saying like I cannot wait until we are back to human sharing it collectively sharing the human experience in person like i cannot wait to go to a concert or like a, a packed bar or what about a birthday party where yes. the birthday boy blows his breath all over the cake is that still a good idea i'll eat the cake eventually i mean that's right? always a bad idea we I mean, just found out <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i mean i think i talked about this on my live one day like we do need to swap germs at some point it's true eventually like we need that for like he, our immune system so anyways um yeah we a year and we're still here guys so congratulations on surviving a year 2020 um full circle of covid days and um i hope that whatever the rest of the year brings that maybe a vaccine for you if it looks up mm -hmm. yeah we'll see what happens all right. Thanks All right. for being on the podcast, yeah. Justin. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. All right.
Bye, everybody. See you guys.